Did you prefer rallying really to everything else? Oh, not really. I think if you had to do one thing, you'd go to motor racing because it was easier. Right. When I say easier, you just went to a circuit and you drove around and you went home, you know. Rallying in those days in particular was mostly done at night time. You could have been out in the back of whoop whoop, black stump, broken hill, anywhere. And if the car breaks down, it's raining and muddy, and you're looking at each other thinking, my God, what are we doing out here? You know, we could have been back home watching TV. But look, I really like the rallying only because I always felt that if you drove harder rallying and tried really hard, you actually went faster. Whereas motor racing, it didn't always happen that way. You know, you you go out, you know, with a really good set of tyres and go around and you get a really good time. You think, oh, that was easy. Wait till I really have a go. And you really have a go and you actually go slower. And it's sort of, you can actually overdrive sometimes. And I think that's... That's a bit of difference. It's disappointing when you try hard and go slower, that's what I'm saying. Whereas if you really try hard and go faster, I think it was nice. And that seemed to happen more so on the dirt. It's rained on rallies before, but the 1973 Total Southern Cross will always be known as the wet one. Right from the start in Sydney's Hyde Park, it rained and rained and rained. Pre-rally favourite was Scotsman Andrew Cowan, who'd already won the event twice with his jovial co-driver, John Bryson. <laughs> Total Oil sponsored the rally, which officially began with scrutineering earlier in the week. Rally cars are checked thoroughly for safety and to see that they comply with international regulations. 74 cars had entered for the 3,000 kilometre event which would be run over forestry roads in northern New South Wales. Base for the rally is to be Port Macquarie, a popular resort town on the New South Wales north coast and each night crews would loop into the rugged New England ranges behind Port Macquarie. Having played host to the Southern Cross for three years, the rally has become quite a tourist attraction for Port Macquarie, adding to the half million who visit the town every year. Because Port Macquarie has other attractions beside rallies. Its beaches are very attractive. Two hundred and sixty miles north of Sydney at the entrance to the Hastings River, Port Macquarie has access to some of New South Wales' best coastline. The permanent population of the town is 11,000, but this is growing dramatically as holidaymakers come back for keeps. But in that first week in October, Port Macquarie is Southern Cross Town.
weeks of publicity before the event have stirred up a lot of interest, both in Port Macquarie and back at the start in Sydney, where the lunchtime crowds cram a wet Hyde Park to see the cars flagged away. Total Australia's managing director, Mr Bezo, was there with a few words of encouragement. And the first car, the works Datsun with British driver Tony Fall at the wheel, is on the road. The rain is bucketing down, but at least Cole Bond can still see the funny side. But it's not so funny on the first competitive section and drivers are soon battling incredibly slippery roads. Zealander Tim Bailey has his Porsche flying, but it is out of the rally within hours of the start after sliding off the road. Kenyan Sheikh Amita won the East African safari in mud like this, so he feels at home. these conditions, it's obvious the big cars are at a disadvantage. There's only a very thin line between going quickly in the mud and ending in a ditch. And the small, powerful Mitsubishi Lancers soon emerge as the cars to beat. Already some cars need service, and even at this stage there have been withdrawals. <laughs> the meal break at Wingham is a chance to count heads and to listen to some stories. Most of the Datsuns have lost points and Cowan is already well in the lead. Even a few hours of rallying can produce some pretty wild tales. I think that's what happened to the Porsche. Yeah, I said it would never happen to me. Oh, man. Yes, yes. I'm the experienced fellow, right? Well, that's not the first time you've had a go off the edge the first time. Oh, very, very. I don't know that I've gone off the edge very much in the Well, I got a vague spring leak Oh, that was the last night. That was mine. Just as I say, yes. Well, yeah, yeah. Where's that? 900 kilometres after leaving Sydney, the weary crews find Port Macquarie, 
and head for an all too brief rest. The Mitsubishi team is all smiles. In just one night, they've captured the first four places. But Colin Bond has put in an amazing performance. Last car to start from Sydney, he's now in fifth position in his XU1. The big wet continues, but not even flooded creeks seem to offer a challenge to the remarkable lancers. Bond comes through like a speedboat. But not everyone makes it. Frank Kilfoyle's work stats and dies in the middle and he has to be rescued by a very sporting Mitsubishi service crew. Dawn and the final control in the forest is a great sight for the surviving crews who've spent the night slipping and sliding over 800 kilometres of tracks like this one. long night they've been up the coast as far as Grafton and it's been muddy all the way. Even for crews well down in the field, the rally still offers a tremendous challenge and they keep going as hard as possible in the chase for the various class awards. Even the loss of hundreds of points is no reason to give up. In spite of the conditions, Andrew Cowan has been able to stretch his lead even further and all of the Datsun 240Zs are now out of contention. But Colin Bond's still going strong. He has his privately entered XU1 still in fifth place. Oh, 
Rally crews might not be too enthusiastic about the local mud, but it does have another use. Thrumster Village is a pottery centre that's won national fame for Dorothy Hope. Students like Bev Harris come from all over Australia to learn potting techniques. Or just to look and buy. The trees the rally drivers are busy missing provide the material for Fred Thompson's craft. A metal worker by trade, he has turned his skill to timber and produces pieces of remarkable fineness in his small workshop. Port Macquarie was one of New South Wales' first settlements and some of its early history is revealed on the headstones in a burying ground first used in 1824. Only yards from the town's main street now, the restored cemetery holds a special fascination. Within sight of the cemetery is the historic Anglican church designed by Australia's famous convict architect, Francis Greenway. But modern history is being made in Port Macquarie by a Southern Cross rally that's been made so tough by the incredibly wet conditions, only 50 cars are still in the event. Many are unable to leave the impound on Friday night and more will drop by the wayside in the darkness. Dots on the map with the unlikely names of Tucky Bunyabar, Karawong and Kalatani see the cars splash through in their desperate chase. But there's no stopping the Lancers, and the first car to arrive at Port Macquarie is Barry Ferguson, running second on points and the first car on the road. How's it going? Going very well. Slipping really out of one to go. Oh, very slippery. Although possibly not as bad as the first night. The first night would have been the most slippery of all the nights so far. It was a pretty tough driver's night last night, wasn't it? Oh, it was. It was indeed. Especially the long section. It was one about uh, 121 kilometres. And that was really rugged. It was rough, it was wet, it was slippery, it was everything all rolled into one. Car still in one piece? Going very, very well indeed. The four cars are going exceptionally well. It's been a hard night for Colin Bond. He's had to change the differential of his Tirana and he's been plagued by flat tyres. In spite of this, he and his co-driver George Shepherd have held on to their fifth position behind the four works lancers. It 
seems rally drivers are a special breed. They roam the forests by night and sleep by day. Rather like at least one inhabitant of Port Macquarie's Marbuck Park. But this little wombat doesn't seem to be having too hard a time. Marbuck provides the public with a slice of Australiana they mightn't see otherwise. but not all of the inhabitants are friendly. In fact, some are decidedly unfriendly. What did you say? Another project is Marineland, where the resident stars are still in training. But if you'd rather stay on top of the water, the Hastings River is a pleasant waterway for cruisers. Back to the rally and it's raining a river. Over four and a half inches have fallen in just ten hours. And even Andrew Cowan is appalled at the thought of driving in these conditions. It's a heck of a way to spend a Saturday night. of Port Macquarie's dozens of motels beckon the drivers as they head out of town. But there's no stopping tonight. a vital service break, there's been no change of major positions, but cars and crews are looking tired.
Frank Kilfoyle continues his story. Uh, he took the bank on the left and we took the bank on the right and we swapped positions. It was good fun coming down there. We thought we had a puncture halfway through it. We got out and had a look at that and we encountered some strange smell in the bush that I've not heard of before and we jumped out and had a look at the dip because we thought it was dip oil. And all told, we had quite an eventful little run. Sounds something typical to KM country, yes. Uh, yeah. uh, no problems with your navigator? You didn't get lost at all tonight? Uh, no, we didn't get lost at all. We, I got us lost once, but only by about five yards. It took us about ten minutes to get back out of it. At daybreak comes the final test. Two flat out timed runs on closed forestry roads. The lancers are going like rockets. Bond's still in fifth, and Frank Kilfoyle's trying desperately to edge his Datsun closer to the flying XU-1. Barry Ferguson almost met disaster. On the very last section, he clobbers a tree, but he's able to continue in his Lancer. Cross. And one, two, three, four for the Mitsubishi team. Andrew Cowan, you've been in five Southern Crosses. Has the rain made this the toughest of them all? I think without question, yes. You know, I mean. In 1969, when I came out here, we had uh, one wet night, and it was really fantastically difficult for me driving in these muddy conditions in Australia. And I haven't, on the rallies I've done since 1969, we've never had rain at all until this year. Have you personally ever struck such wet conditions in any rally, anywhere? No, not really. I think the Australian mud, once it gets rain on the top of it, you know, is just the worst possible conditions that any rally driver could ever wish to come across. Seventy-two cars headed out of Sydney four days ago, but only 40 are listed as finishers. In the conditions the crews encountered, just to stay on the road was an achievement. Just in case any driver did stay dry, the service crews have a special treatment. For the winners, there are trophies to collect. and back in Sydney at the official presentation dinner at the Spaghetti Factory.
Datsun driver Sheik Amita didn't score, but he's still laughing. And so are top privateers Bob Riley and Adrian Van Loon. they collect their trophies from Total's Assistant General Manager Frank Rushworth, the drivers agree on a verdict. The 1973 Southern Cross will be remembered for a long time. 